All right, I guess this is live. Um, I didn't realize it automatically went live. When I uh, click the stream thing, usually it forces me to start it on YouTube as well. Anywho, not a big deal. Well, let's uh, get going here. Uh, we've got five matches tonight. Our first match is going to be in the ladies division. I'm going to go ahead and start up the application here. There we go. And let's select our NWC. Is Minerva in here? She's either going to be under Minerva or Josephine Blatt. She is not. So let's go and add her real quick. Roster editor, we're going to go to NWC. Let's find Minerva over here. M. Molina. Mike. Mildred. And she is not there. Is she under Josephine Blatt? J.K. She is. All right. Now we've added her. Now she should be easy to find. NWC. Josephine Blatt. Load her in. And she will be facing May Young. So let's load up our May Young card in the red corner. We're going to start that matchup. We'll flip Minerva so she's. Easier on the eyes. Nobody likes looking at her all, uh, <coughs> all crooked and awkward. Anywho, so this is going to be our opening contest. May Young versus Josephine Blatt, or Minerva, as she was known. And let's roll for some initiative. Blatt rolls a nine. Minerva, or... May Young rolls an 8, so Josephine Blatt wins on the lockup. She starts us out with a cannonball lift. This is a power move, and she's definitely going to have the power there. And May Young is hurt by that cannonball lift. And a crotch and half Nelson by Minerva. And Young is hurt. And Minerva, once again, crotch and half Nelson on, Minerva, or on May Young. And Young is... In trouble, rolling her pin here. Target is three. She rolls in 11. So, easy kick out, but a quick fatigue for or on May Young by Minerva. And Minerva with the body vice. And the target is going to be five. And the roll is a nine. Minerva really uh, taking it to May Young here. I'm not going to throw her out of the ring. She's going to roll up. So, closed fist. 
This is a choice F maneuver. Uh, choice F is either going to be a level 2 move, which is going to work on 6 or lower, plus or minus agility, negative 2, so that's going to work on 4 or lower, so that's not a good one. Or a level 3 move that's going to work on 5 or lower, that's not really that good either, but that's the one we're going to do. And with a roll of 6, she does not get it. And so finally, Mae Young takes over with a big open hand chop on Minerva. And that chop puts Minerva down. She was not expecting Mae Young to hit that hard. And Young with a body press. This is a choice G maneuver. Uh, level 3 move, 7 or plus or minus power. That is not happening. That would be 3 or less. And so we've got the end of the turnbuckle chart. It is. Uh, she's an A turnbuckle, so this is a lose-lose. <laughs> and Minerva turns it around on Mae Young as they back into the turnbuckle and Blatt pla plasters her with some chops to the chest in the turnbuckle and she is on the attack on level 2 offense. And Minerva with a front face lock takeover on Mae Young. And Young gets out of that and pops her head out and takes control of the fight grabbing the legs of Minerva on her way up, pulling her to the ground and locking her in a Boston Crab. And that's going to hurt Josephine Blatt Minerva. And a flying hair mare by Mae Young. And Blatt not going with it. So she just pulled her hair and made her upset. And Minerva with a stranglehold. Just to hammer home how upset she really is. And that's going to hurt Mae Young. And a one-arm choke throw by Minerva on Mae Young. And that's going to leave Mae Young down as Minerva going to toss her out of the ring. This may not be a great idea as Mae Young has an A ring rating. And a roll of 8 means that uh, Mae Young going to be able to enter the ring without too much trouble. Minerva not going to make a big deal about it. And Minerva is on the attack. And Minerva nails her with a closed fist. This is a choice F maneuver. Uh, 6 plus or minus agility. Uh, that's not going to be a good one. Uh, six plus or minus power. That's a five, so that's going to be five. That's what she's going to go for. Not great choices either way around. And with a roll of six, she's not going to get it. And Mae Young comes in, takes control. She's not going to try to back her into the turnbuckle. Instead, she's going to choke her on the ropes. And Josephine Blatt, too strong for that. Not going to have her choke, or not going to be choked. And Minerva going to go for the front face lock takeover on Mae Young. And Young is hurt. And now, Josephine Blatt whips, or backs Miner or blah, blah, blah. Minerva backs Mae Young into the ropes. Both things start with an M, so I get a little confused there. And it looks like Minerva... Is going to back her into the ropes, put the knees to the midsection, and take and continue the attack on level three here. As she applies some leg scissors on Mae Young. And that's gonna hurt Mae Young. And a one-arm choke throw by Josephine Blatt. Minerva throwing Mae Young all over the ring. And Young is down. Uh, she's gonna leave the ring though. She's got an A ring rating, so that is an option. And it's not going to do much good. She's going to catch a little bit of a breather, but she's going to have to get back in the ring. And when she does, Minerva is waiting for her. And Minerva grabs her again. One arm choke throw. And Mae Young is hurt. Minerva going for that closed fist again. This hasn't traditionally been a great idea. Uh, five or less is the target. And with a roll of 11, Mae Young is out of the way of that closed fist strike and Young attempts a flying hair mare on Minerva and this time Minerva goes over and she's hurt and Mae Young with another flying hair mare and she pulls Minerva over again Minerva's down as Mae Young is on the attack and this is a chokehold sleeper from Mae Young this is an add one maneuver so we're gonna add one and roll on level three and Minerva is hurt and Mae Young hits a couple of open hand chops on Minerva here. And that is going to hurt Minerva. And Mae Young follows it up with more flying hair mares. But this time Blatt says, no, I'm not going. 
And Minerva counters. Minerva with a grab and throw. This is an agility move, and she does not have the agility. So Mae Young able to roll through that and take control of the fight. Another flying hair mare attempt, and that works. And she locks her in the crossover knee lock. And Minerva is hurt. And as she gets up, Mae Young moves in. Blasts her with a couple more open hand chops. And those chops are stinging Minerva. And Young going to back her into the ropes. And they call for a clean break and get it. As these two ladies enter the center of the ring, ready to lock up again. And they lock up, and Minerva takes it. Minerva with a front face lock takeover out of the lockup. And that's going to hurt Mae Young. And Minerva follows up with a stranglehold. Mae Young is hurt. And he, she's going to back Mae Young into the ropes. And Minerva really, really takes control, using her power to just kind of force her into whatever she wants while they're against the ropes. And now Minerva with a hip and harness lift on Mae Young. And Young is hurt. And now that crotch and half Nelson. She was successful with this a couple of times at the beginning of the match. And that's going to hurt Mae Young. And a front face lock takeover. And Young is hurt once again. And now a one-arm choke throw. That's going to hurt Mae Young. And another one-arm choke throw, just throwing her all over the ring. And that's going to lead to a pin as she covers Mae Young. Minerva going for the pin here. The target is going to be five. And with a roll of 12, she is unsuccessful in keeping her down. But Minerva is in solid control of this match as she locks Mae Young into a body vice. The target is going to be seven, and the roll is a five. So there we go. Minerva is your winner. And we'll record this. That way I can uh, uh, card 5.9. Uh, this is the ninth month, so it's September of year five. And the event location is unknown. Add. And we had Josephine Blatt beat Mae Young. And she beat her with the body vice over here. And it looks like uh, Young had four tokens. And Blatt, I believe, only had one token. Let's see here. Yeah, one token. So that was a total of five tokens, so that's a two-and-a-half star match. And we've got Mae Young had five, and Minerva had one. Or no, four. She had four, not five. And we'll hit OK. And now we'll go back to the main menu and we'll start our second match. And our second match is going to be in the light heavyweight division as Billy Varga takes on George Tragos. And so let's find these cards. We've got Billy Varga. And we've got George Tragos here. Hack and Schmidt. Gamma, I did not load Tragos into this one either. Man, I am missing some guys in the in the roster here. Uh, NWC and G for George. George Tragos. Now he should be added. And he is, main menu. Okay, so we got Billy Varga, and it looks like he's still loaded. Good. And so now we can load George Tragos. And we'll start this match. And we'll roll for some initiative here. Varga rolls an 8 on the lockup. And Tragos rolls a 7. So Varga going to be successful in the lockup. And right out of the lockup, he punches him solidly in the jaw. This is an agility move. They are tied in agility. So that is going to work. And Tragos catches it on the jaw. He is hurt. And Varga rolling on level two. Uh, Neil Lau asks, 
who all is here. This is new. Um, what do you mean who all is he, who's in the chat? I actually don't know. I haven't even looked. Um, I just kind of threw this together last minute. It looks like you might be the only person here. And yes, this is new. Um, I've been working on it a little bit in my spare time. It works for all platforms. It's different from my other one. Um, it works with Mac, with, uh, you know, Apple computers. So like MacBooks, it works on Windows. It works on Linux. Um, that's been the, the benefit of this one. It's, it's a little less, um, robust. Oh, Michael Broad is here, but it, it works on everything. It works on the, it works on your phone. If you have an Android, uh, I've been playing this. I've, I've had this built for my phone for probably four months now. And it's, it's been a blast to just kind of play it on the bus or while I'm waiting in waiting rooms at the doctor or whatever. So, you know, but yeah, it works on a lot of stuff, but it is new on the computer and I am kind of putting it through its paces. That's why I haven't been rolling on the actual cards lately. Um, anyway, so Billy Varga hits a drop kick on George Tragos. And that drop kick doesn't catch all of him, but it does catch him and Tragos is dazed as Varga follows up with a grounded wrist lock on George Tragos as a choice F maneuver. Uh, level 2, 6 plus or minus agility, so that's going to be a 5. Or a level 3, 6 plus or minus power, which is plus 2, so that's going to make that an 8. So that's the one we're going for. A level 3 grounded wrist lock on 8 or less. He is successful. And Tragos is hurt. And now Billy Varga backs him into the turnbuckle. And Tragos counters. And Tragos on level 2 offense with a grinding toe hold on Billy Varga. And Varga's hurt. And now Tragos grabs him up in the bear hug and takes him to the ground. And Billy Varga able to shake himself free. And Varga is in control of the fight now. As he grabs a side headlock on George Tragos. And Tragos is dazed. As Varga grabs that grapevine, step over toe hold. This is a level 2 move, and Tragos is hurt. And Varga throwing that drop kick once again, catching Tragos and hurting him. And Varga comes in with the stumbling Tragos, grabs him up, and body slams him to the mat. Tragos hits hard as he's back to his feet. But Varga able to scoop his leg out from underneath him and lock him in a half crab. And Tragos too close to the ropes as he grabs the ropes and is able to get back to his feet. Varga once again throwing that drop kick. He's been pretty successful with it. And that catches Tragos and Tragos is hurt. And once again he follows in and scoops him up and nails him with the body slam. And this is going to be a pin attempt. Target is 4 and the roll is a 10. So Varga going to throw Tragos from the ring. And the opponent rolls on level 2 offense. Uh, as neither one, of the, neither one of these guys make any use of the outside, Varga just kind of backs off to the center of the ring. Tragos easily able to re-enter without any, any issue. But Varga is in an advantageous position and comes in on him. And with a half crab now... And Tragos is hurt, and Tragos stands up from that half crab, but Varga scoops him up with a body slam again, hurting George Tragos, and Varga just can't keep him down here, and Billy Varga gonna back him into the ropes, and the referee calls for a clean break, and he gets it, and Varga with a roll of 12, Tragos with a roll of, of 6, and so Billy Varga going to take it on the initiative roll here out of the lockup and back Tragos into the turnbuckle. And Tragos in a lot of trouble here as Varga clubs him into the turnbuckle, just driving those shoulders into his gut. And now Tragos in trouble and rolling on level 3 defense. And Tragos is down. He's not going to roll out of the ring. He's going to stay in the ring. He's only got a C ring rating, so. Varga. Going to nail him with some knee lifts. This is a choice H. So that's going to be an into the ropes or a level 3 move. 
that's going to work on six or less. Ah, uh, the ropes are a B. <laughs> I think that's what he's going to do. And once again, the referee calls for the clean break. And he gets it. Varga with a seven. Tragos with a six. Varga once again successful on the lockup. And Varga grabs a headlock and turns it into a spinning single leg takedown on George Tragos. And Tragos is hurt. And now Billy Varga nails Tragos with a big drop kick, and Tragos is hurt as Varga backs him into the ropes again. And Varga able to continue his attack on Tragos against the ropes, throwing the drop kick while Tragos is against the ropes here. And that doesn't catch him. He's able to kind of use the ropes to sweep himself out of the way. And the drop kick caught him a little bit. But not a lot as he's dazed, and Varga follows in with a snap mare. But Tragos finally able to counter that one, and he takes control on level one, grabbing Varga with a side headlock, and that's going to hurt Billy Varga as Count Varga now. On the defensive as George Tragos locks in a hammer lock. This is an agility move, and they are tied for agility, so that's going to work. And Varga is hurt. And now Tragos bear hug takedown. And Varga counters the bear hug. And he slips out and snap mare on George Tragos. Tragos is dazed. And Varga tries to grab him in a side headlock, but Tragos says no. Tragos once again grabs him in the bear hug, tries to trip him down. And that one is successful. Varga's on the mat. And Tragos locks in a grinding toehold. And now Billy Varga is down. And George Tragos with a step over toehold face lock. That's not an add one. I thought that was an add one, but it's not. Okay. <clears throat> the step over toehold face lock on Billy Varga. Varga's hurt. And once again, grinding toehold. And Varga's down. And the Grecian sleeper grip. Varga's still down. As Tragos continues his assault. And there's a double wrist lock. This is an add one. And Varga's hurt. And Tragos, as Varga gets back up, grabs him with a double leg pickup. And slams him to the ground. Oh. And Varga, able to grab the ropes as they're going down, keep himself up. And Tragos can't bring him down. Gets himself off balance trying, and Varga throws a punch to the jaw that connects and rocks George Tragos. And now, Billy Varga with a grapevine step over toe hold. And Tragos is hurt. Varga gonna back him into the ropes here. And they get another clean break. Varga rolls a six. Tragos rolls a nine, so Tragos finally wins the lockup. And Tragos once again trying that double leg pickup to slam. And this one is going to work. And he grabs that hammer lock on Billy Varga. And Varga's hurt. As Tragos wrenches that hammer lock. Varga back to his feet, but he's still in the hammer lock and is definitely worse for the wear. Tragos transitions from the hammer lock to a side headlock and Varga's hurt. Tragos. Bear hug takedown again, trying to scoop up that leg while well, he's got him in the bear hug. Take him down. Varga, with the with his agility, able to keep that from happening, and is on the attack. And now Billy Varga tries a snap mare, and that's going to hurt George Tragos. And Varga grabs up the leg, trips him down, and locks in the half crab. Tragos able to grab the ropes, and Varga pulls him back. And has got him in the half crab again. Uh, Tragos able to struggle his way to the ropes. And now they're both back to their feet as Varga backs him into the turnbuckle. And in the turnbuckle, Varga lands a forearm shot right to the side of the jaw. And that's going to rock George Tragos as Varga rolls on level 
to offense again. He's not going to push him back into the turnbuckle again. Instead, he's going to try the grapevine step over toe hold, and that's going to hurt George Tragos. Tragos. And not able to avoid the drop kick by Billy Varga. And Tragos is hurt. And now he's going to back him into the turnbuckle again. And Varga. This time he connects with three big forearm shots to the side of the jaw. And Tragos is really in trouble. Varga connects with a knee lift while he's in the corner as well. Choice H. Uh... Let's see, six or better. He's going to go for it. And with a roll of eight, Tragos able to grab the leg up and take Varga down. And Tragos is on the attack now, grinding toe hold. And Billy Varga can't get out of it as Tragos continues his attack. Double leg Nelson. This is a choice F. Uh, power rating is plus one, so that's going to be seven or better and the better of the two choices. So that's what we're going to try. So, with a roll of four, he is successful, and Varga is down as that double leg Nelson does its damage. And he transitions from the double leg Nelson to a double wrist lock. And this is an add one maneuver, so we're going to add one fatigue. And Varga's going to roll on level three. Varga's hurt, and the double leg pick up to slam. And that's going to hurt Billy Varga as Tragos continues his attack with a grinding toehold. And Varga's down. He's not going to roll out of the ring. And there's that double leg Nelson again. Uh, this is going to be seven or better. Or seven or less. He can't get him for the, the second time. That double leg Nelson worked once. It uh, doesn't work again, though. As Varga able to continue or to take over. And now Varga scoops him up with a body slam, and that hurts George Tragos. And now he backs Tragos into the ropes. And he is able to drop toehold off the ropes. Tragos strikes the mat hard. Varga on the attack on level 3 now with a rolling beal throw. And that's going to hurt George Tragos. And he locks in the half crab. Tragos able to reach the ropes. And Varga... Grabs a, a headlock as they come off, the, as Tragos gets up with the ropes. And Varga transitions to a spinning single leg takedown. And Tragos, able to avoid that a little too flashy when he should have just gone for something more simple. And Tragos hits him with a flying mare, but Varga, able to roll through. And Varga hits, or grabs a grounded wrist lock on George Tragos. And we're going to see a level 3 move here because the power is plus 2. So that's 8 or better. And with a roll of 9, he is unsuccessful. So Tragos takes over as he counters the grounded wrist lock from Billy Varga. And locks in a double or a bear hug takedown. And he's dazed. And now Tragos with a flying mare. And that's going to hurt Varga. And the double leg pick up to slam. Vargas hurt. Going to back him into the turnbuckle. And Varga gets nailed with some punches in the corner from Tragos. The referee's not super happy, but they did their job. And Varga falls to the mat with those punches. And Tragos going for the cover. The target is going to be 5. The roll is a 9, so he's unsuccessful. And with the Grecian sleeper grip, Varga is down. And he's going to toss Varga out of the ring here. And Varga, able to reverse it as they're falling out of the ring, lands on top of George Tragos. Tragos is really hurting here. He's going to roll his count out. And the target is five. The roll is an eight, so he's not counted out. He's able to kind of slide back in the ring before the count out happens, but... Varga is in control now. And Varga hits the rolling beal throw on George Tragos. Tragos is down. And Varga does it. He locks on the abdominal stretch for the first time in this match. That abdominal stretch is a painful hold. And the target is going to be 7 for George Tragos. 
And with a roll of seven, Billy Varga has him. And that's going to do it. And Billy Varga is your winner. And we'll record this one. Part 5-9. Uh, Billy Varga beat George Tragos with an abdominal stretch. Ah, that helps if I spell it right, huh? Mission. And let's see, this was six. So this is a three-star match. And Varga had three. And Tragos had a three. And there we go. We have two matches down now. And we're on to our third match of the evening, which is going to see Luthez take on Paul Bosch. This should be an interesting one. As Thez and Bosch. Luthez versus Paul Bosch. And here we go. We're going to roll some initiative. Thez rolls an 11. Bosch rolls a 7. So Thez has it on the lockup. That fall out of the ring didn't help George. Yeah, he kind of, that was the beginning of the downfall there. Luthez wins on the lockup here. And grabs a takedown to head scissors on Paul Bosch. This is an agility move. And he has both the agility and the power in this match, Thez does. So, definitely an advantage there. He is hurt, or Bosch is hurt, I should say. And Thez rolling on level 2. Punch to the ribs. And Bosch blocks those punches. He was a boxer for a little while, so... Punching on Paul Bosch, probably not the greatest idea. And Bosch with a chop to the neck. Oop, I rolled the wrong thing. And Thez is hurt with that punt, or with that chop to the neck. And Bosch is on the attack into the turnbuckle here. Thez is an A turnbuckle rating, so... Probably not a great thing for Bosch. And it was not. Thez is able to turn the count or to turn the tables in the corner. And as they break, Thez moves in and takes him down. Thez on level two offense here. Throws a bunch of drop kicks at Paul Bosch. And they catch Bosch solidly. Bosch is down. He's not gonna roll out of the ring. He's got a C ring rating. And Lou Thez. Going to be on the attack here. Thez locks him in a double wrist lock. And that's going to hurt Paul Bosch. Into the turnbuckle by Lou Thez. And uh, opponent rolls on level 3 offense. So Thez once again just kind of shows his superior wrestling ability as they back into the corner. And he locks him with a double wrist lock again. Double wrist lock doesn't bring him down, but it does hurt Paul Bosch. Luthez scoops him up and spins him around with the airplane spin. Bosch is down and dizzy. And Thez once again grabs that double wrist lock on Paul Bosch. And this time Bosch is in trouble. And Thez cranks that double wrist lock. Bosch still in trouble. And Thez picks Bosch up with the wrist lock, grabs him up in the power bomb, and attempts a release power bomb. Uh, There's going to be a level three move that's going to work on rolls of ten or less. So on a roll of nine, that is successful, and Bosch is rolling on level three defense. And that power bomb doesn't—he doesn't land as solidly as Thez would have liked, and he's only hurt. As Thez scoops him up with an airplane spin again and plants him. And he's once again down and dizzy. And now Thez grabs that double wrist lock for a second time. Or second time? For, I don't know, the third or fourth time now. And Paul Bosch won't go down. And he lets go of the double wrist lock, throws some drop kicks at Paul Bosch. Those catch him solidly. He is down now. And then Thez waits for him to get up and presses him to the mat with the Thez press. This is a level 2 finisher. So the target is going to be 5. And the roll is a 2. So just like that, 
Uh, all Bosch and is beaten by Luthez with the Thez press. Uh, only one fatigue token on this one. So Thez beats Bosch with a Thez press pinfall. Uh, only one fatigue token. I'm going to say that that was a one star match. It wasn't quite a dud. Uh, and Thez has zero. Bosch has one. And there we go. So our next fight is going to be in the heavyweight division. It's going to see Wild Bill Longson is going to take on Tootsmont. And this is our semi-main event. So here we go. We've got Bill Longson. And he's going to be in there against Tootsmont. And where's Toots? I know I've got him in here. There he is. So, Longson and Mont going at one another here. And we're going to roll for the initiative here. Longson rolls a 10. Mont rolls an 8. So, Longson takes it on the lockup. <clears throat> Longson going to back Mont into the ropes. And they're going to go for a... Or they're going to get a clean break. As they roll again for initiative. Longson with a 6. Mont with a six, so they tied on the roll. That means that they're going to go up one offensive level here as they can't get control. They break off the lockup and stare each other down before locking up again. Longson once again rolls a six. Mont rolls a ten. And since they were supposed to start on level two, Mont takes over on level three. And Mont nails the flying headlock. Just like that. This is a plus two finisher, so the target is going to be four. And the roll is an 8. And now Toots Mont in a really advantageous position as he locks Longson in the abdominal stretch. And Longson is hurt as Mont grabs the bear hug. This is a choice F maneuver. Uh, Longson has a negative 2 power and a plus 1 agility. So it makes more sense to do the agility here. So that's going to work on 7 or less. It will be a level 2 move. And with a roll of 7, he is successful. And Longson is hurt by that bear hug. And now, Tootsmont with a reverse takedown on Bill Longson. And Longson able to escape and take control of the match. Grabs up Tootsmont and rakes his eyes across the top rope. And Mont is down. Mont can't see. And Longson grabs a toehold. And Tootsmont able to escape the toehold and put him in a grinding headlock. This is a power move, and they're even on power, so that is going to work. And Longson is hurt as he tries that bear hug again. So this is going to be that plus, uh, seven or less. And with a roll of six, he is successful. And the bear hug hurts Longson again. And now another bear hug. But this one is not successful. Bill Longson able to box the ears of Toots Mont and take control of the fight. Longson, after boxing the ears, rakes the eyes on the ropes again. And Mont is hurt. I guess he learned to close his eyes that time. And Longson with a hip lock takedown on Toots Mont. But Mont says no, not going over. And he locks him in the grinding headlock again. And that is going to be successful as Bill Longson is hurt. And Tootsmont with a back hip toss. And he hurts Bill Longson. And Mont going to back him into the ropes. And they get a clean break again. And with a roll of 10, Tootsmont wins on the lockup. And Mont with another back hip toss on wild Bill Longson. Bill Longson is hurt, and a reverse takedown, and Bill Longson once again able to avoid that, and Longson grabs him up with a beel toss, throws him across the ring. That's going to hurt Toots Mont, and he rakes his eyes across the top rope again. Mont goes to the ground, and Longson once again grabs a toehold. And Toots Mont able to counter it. 
And now with a back hip toss. Bill Longson is hurt. And Mont grabs a bear hug. This is a choice F maneuver, so that's going to be that 7 or less. And he is not successful. And Bill Longson with a top wrist lock on Toots Mont. Uh, Mont is dazed by that top wrist lock. Longson clubs him with a plus or with a shot to the gut, but Mont able to avoid that. And he hits a reverse takedown. Bill Longson been very successful in uh, avoiding that takedown. And he counters on level two offense. Backs him into the turnbuckle. <clears throat> and Mont beaten down by Bill Longson, who is frustrated. And Mont is now rolling on level three defense. And Mont is hurt. And a choke in the corner on Toots Mont by Wild Bill Longson. That's going to hurt Toots. And Mont or Longson going to release just long enough not to get disqualified before he starts choking him in the corner again, leaving Toots Mont down. Wild Bill Longson hits that big back body drop as Mont tries to stand back up to his feet. And then he goes for the cover. This is a this is not a finisher, so the target is going to be three, and the roll is a nine. So Mont able to kick out without too much trouble there. And Longson follows it up with a toehold. And Toots Mont able to get to the ropes and get back to his feet. Oop. That, ignore that. I rolled on the wrong guy. Punch to the gut. This is an agility move, and that's not going to work. And so Toots Mont is going to grab a hammer lock on Wild Bill. And Bill Longson is hurt. Reverse takedown. Bill Longson counters. And Longson with a head and arm takedown on Toots Mont, but Mont counters. And now Mont tries the toe hold, but Bill Longson counters. And now Longson going to push him back into the turnbuckle. And Mont not able to counter this as he pushes him back into the turnbuckle. And look at that. He's just rubbing his forearm across the face, across the bridge of the nose of Toots Mont. Wild Bill Longson on the attack here. As Mont stumbles a little forward out of the turnbuckle, he grabs him up in a headlock and brings him over to the ropes where he rakes his eyes across that top rope again. And this is going to lead to a pinfall again as Toots Mont is blind once again. Uh, target is going to be four. Roll is a six. And Bill Longson on the attack. Longson not going to throw Mont out of the ring. Going to roll up and rake his eyes on the ropes again. He's hurt. And Longson grabs him up again, rakes his eyes across the top rope, and he's going for another pin. Target is five. Roll is a ten. And Bill Longson connects with a back body drop as Toots Mont stumbles towards him. Still blinded. And Mont is hurt. And Longson grabs a top wrist lock on Toots. And Toots is hurt. And now an elbow strike. And this is a choice F maneuver. So we've got a level 2, 6, plus or minus agility. So that's going to work on 5 or better. Or level 3, 6, plus or minus power. So that's 4 or better. Neither of these are good. We're going to go for the level 2, 5 or better. And it's unsuccessful. So Toots takes over here. And Toots takes over with the reverse takedown. And Bill Longson counters that reverse takedown again. That reverse takedown has not worked a single time for Toots Mont in this match. And now Bill Longson grabs him up. Beal tosses him across the ring. Mont is hurt. Longson follows up with a hip lock takedown. And that's not gonna that's not gonna put Mont down as hard as he wanted. And Mont is only dazed. And he's going to try that punch to the gut again. Mont not going to have that, as that's going to be countered. So Toots Mont going to back Bill Longson into the ropes, and they're going to end up on a clean break. And Longson rolls a 4, Mont rolls an 11, so Mont wins the initiative roll, he wins the lockup, and attempts another reverse takedown. And that reverse takedown is finally successful, as it takes... Longson down. Longson smacks the mat. He's hurt, but not fully down. As he gets back to his feet, Mont follows in with a bear hug. This is a choice F maneuver. That's going to work 
uh, on level two on a roll of seven or better. And with a roll of four, it's successful. And Longson counters it, even though the roll was successful. And he grabs him with a collar and elbow tie-up. And Toots Mont wins the collar and elbow and, apply and attempts a test of strength. Longson wins the test of strength and pushes Toots Mont back into the turnbuckle. And Mont loses that turnbuckle struggle and gets nailed with an elbow strike. And that's going to be a level 2 plus or minus agility. Uh, that's 5 or less he needs. And over the roll of 10, that's not going to be successful. So Mont backs Longson into the ropes from the turnbuckle. And it's a rope break. So the referee calls for a clean break, and he gets it from these two guys. Longson rolls a 4. Mont rolls a 4. They break off their lockup. And stare each other down. They're now rolling on level for level three offense here. Longson rolls a six. Mont rolls a five. So Longson on level three grabs a toehold. Not as exciting as it could be, but the toehold does put Mont down. And Longson goes for another toehold. And Mont is hurt. And Longson backs him into the turnbuckle. And now the turnbuckle roll is successful. Or the turnbuckle push is successful, and Toots Mont is backed into the buckle, and Longson takes control of the match, and Longson grabs him with a double leg trip and puts him on the ground. This is a choice H maneuver. So level three that's going to work on six or less, and with a roll of four, it is successful, and Toots Mont is down. He's going to roll out of the ring. But he's not able to make anything happen as Longson is stopped by the referee from doing anything and Mont is able to get back in the ring. But Longson jumps all over him. Hiplock takedown and Mont is hurt. And now he rakes his eyes on the ropes once again. And this is another pin. The target is six. The roll is a six. So finally, after all of those attacks to the eyes, Toots Mont is disabled just enough for Wild Bill Longson to get the pin. And Longson is your winner. Uh, let's see, we've got five, so that's a two and a half star match. Mont has four. Longson has one. We'll go ahead and record this in here. Longson beat Mont with an eye rake on the ropes. Eye rake on the ropes pinfall. And we've got a, a two and a half stars. And we've got Longson, one fatigue. Mont had, how many fatigue did Mont have? Four. So there we go. And we're on to our main event of the evening. This is a junior heavyweight title match hitting our champion, William the Solid Man Muldoon, against El Santo. And Santo has been very, very successful in his uh, in his matches here. I think he has lost one total match. So I would say he's doing good here. Muldoon versus El Santo. And El Santo is in the red corner. Here we go. Uh, the NBBW World's Junior Heavyweight title is at stake here. As we roll for the initiative, we've got four from Muldoon. We've got 12 from Santo. So Santo starting hot here. Lucha arm drag on William Muldoon. Muldoon counters. Muldoon attempts a hip lock throw. This is a power maneuver. He is going to have the power advantage. So that is going to work. And El Santo is hurt. And now reverse crucifix from Muldoon. This is a choice C. Ah. Uh, Level 3, plus or minus agility, that's not going to happen. Level 2, plus or minus power, or 6, plus or minus power, so that's 7 or less. And with a roll of 5, that is successful. So the reverse crucifix happens. And Santo counters it and backs him into the turnbuckle. And Muldoon can't quite get the upper hand on El Santo as Santo fireman carries him out of the turnbuckle takes control of, or keeps control of the match, 
And as Muldoon is getting up, Santo hits multiple scoop slams. And that's going to hurt William Muldoon. Oop. Hold on. <laughs> I'm hitting that twice. And I shouldn't be. I should be hitting his offense. Sling, uh, slingshot sent on from El Santo on the solid man. And Muldoon counters. Muldoon with a flying headmare on El Santo. And that's going to hurt El Santo. And this is that reverse crucifix again. Uh, I believe it's a seven or better. Yep, seven or less, technically. I say better, but I really mean less. Uh, and with a roll of nine, that is not successful. And Santo with a slingshot sent on again. And Muldoon counters. And Muldoon grabs a single leg trip and control. And Santo says nope. And that single leg trip doesn't happen. And Santo, once again, takes him down and goes for that slingshot senton. But Muldoon able to get out of the way. Santo should stop with the fancy stuff and just start wrestling. And Muldoon grabs a single leg again. Is he able to trip him down and control the match? He is. And that's going to put Muldoon on the attack as he backs Santo into the ropes. And as they hit the ropes... Muldoon grabs a headlock and is in control of the match. And Muldoon keeps that headlock applied. Going to back him into the ropes on the other side. And Santo able to roll him up. He had his head. Santo able to do some kind of crazy roll-up pinfall on the solid man. The target is two. The roll is six. Muldoon is able to ignore his first fatigue. So he doesn't earn a fatigue token here. And, but El Santo is in control now, and El Santo attempts a double armbar pin on William Muldoon, and Muldoon is being pinned again, and the target is two, the roll is a five, Muldoon adds one fatigue this time, as Santo now on the attack, Santo not going to throw Muldoon out of the ring, but he is going to hit that flying scissors hold, or the flying head scissors, choice A, this is going to be a ropes, or a 7 plus or minus power. Uh, we're going to try the ropes. And Muldoon able to turn the tables on El Santo as they back into the ropes. And takes control of the fight on level 3 offense. So a big counter there. And Muldoon locks in the double shoulder lock. This is an add 1. And so El Santo is hurt. And now... He locks him in the hammer lock in half Nelson. This is also an add one. And he's hurt again. And he keeps wrenching that hammer lock in half Nelson. So we're going to add one more. And now El Santo is down. And Santo, he's not going to throw him out of the ring. Muldoon is a little more upstanding than that. This is a choice C. Uh, so seven or less for a level two move, and he gets it. So that reverse crucifix does happen, dazing El Santo. And now he's got the waist and chest hold. This is an agility move. Santo has the agility, so that's not going to work. And El Santo counters and then hits multiple scoop slams on William Muldoon. And Muldoon is hurt. As Santo nails him with a flying mare, but Muldoon able to roll through without any damage. And take control or reverse crucifix. This is a 7 or less, and it is successful. And El Santo counters even though the roll was successful, and locks him in an octopus hold. And uh, he's rolling on level 3, so Muldoon is hurt here. And Santo continues to really wrench that octopus. And he is hurt. And now he lets go of the octopus hold, and a staggered William Muldoon is blasted by a running body attack. And this is going to be a power move, because his power is less. Uh, so six or less for a level two. And with a roll of six, it's successful. But Muldoon able to catch him and just kind of plant him down. And Muldoon attempts a headlock and shake as Santo is getting back to his feet. And that's going to daze El Santo. And he's still got that headlock on. And he is still shaking him. And that's going to continue to daze El Santo. And now he's going to move from the headlock to the full front chancery. As Santo is dazed still. And he's still got that full front chancery on. 
Jeez, these guys are just... This is the 15-minute headlock that people talk about, apparently. And DeSanto is dazed. So now, Muldoon going to attempt the waist and chest hold, and that's not going to work. So Santo finally able to take control of the match again. Attempts a slingshot senton, and that's going to daze William Muldoon. And Santo with a lucha arm drag. And Muldoon's going to counter and reapply the full front chancery. El Santo going to pop his head out and attempt a battering ram. That's not going to work. As Muldoon is going to back him back into the turnbuckle. And now Santo taken down out of the turnbuckle with a fireman's carry by William Muldoon. And Muldoon attempts, or, to, or doesn't attempt, he actually locks in the hammerlock and half Nelson on El Santo. This is an add one. So we're going to add one. And Santo is down. And now Muldoon locks on that three-quarters Nelson. And Santo down once again. And here's a back neck hold by William Muldoon. This is a choice E. Uh, so it's going to be eight plus one, so nine or less. And with a roll of nine, he is successful. And Santo is dazed by that back neck hold. And now Muldoon with a hip lock throw. That's going to be successful. And Muldoon hurts Santo with that hip lock throw. And reverse crucifix. I think this is a seven. Yep, seven. And with a roll of nine, he is unsuccessful. And Santo takes control. Locks on that octopus hold. And Muldoon is hurt. And transitions from the octopus to a flying head scissors. And this is a choice A maneuver. So it's going to be ropes of B. Or level 2 of set on 7. We're going to go with ropes. And Muldoon. Going to roll on the out of the ring chart. Uh, and Muldoon falls out of the ring. Badly twisting his knee. And so he's going to roll his count out. And with a roll of 8. Or with a roll of 8 and a target of 3. He's able to get back in the ring. But... El Santo is in control. And Santo with a double armbar pin. That's going to hurt Muldoon. And now a flying mare. And Muldoon is dazed. Oop. Battering ram. Not going to be successful on, El, or on William Muldoon as he takes control of the match. And backs El Santo into the ropes. This is definitely the most trouble we've seen William Muldoon have with somebody in a long, long time. And El Santo rolling on level 2 offense here as he takes control of the rope, of the backing into the ropes here. Running body attack, choice C. Uh, this is going to be a power. So level 2, it's going to work on 6 or less. And with a roll of 7, it doesn't work. And Muldoon once again locks in that hammer lock and half Nelson. Add 1 and roll on level 3. That is going to hurt him. And he's going to try backing him into the ropes again. And Santo able to control this as he does a drop toe hold as they get right to the ropes. And Muldoon goes bouncing off the ropes and strikes the back of his head on the mat pretty hard. And Santo going for that death jump. And William Muldoon not having any of that nonsense as he catches Santo out of the air for the on the crossbody press and just delivers him to the mat with authority. And now Muldoon is on the attack. Muldoon not going to throw him out of the ring, but he is going to lock on the hammer lock and half Nelson again. This is an add one maneuver. So three add one here, and Santo is down. Muldoon side Salto on... Uh, El Santo, side salto, El Santo. That is a mouthful. Dazed one. And Muldoon grabs the headlock and shakes Santo. Santo pops his head out during the shaking and takes control of the match. Running body attack. Uh, six or less here. And with a roll of three, he is successful. And Muldoon able to get out of the way of the running body attack. And take control of the fight. Gonna back him in. Into the ropes. 
And Santo able to take control on the ropes, just able to spin it around and deliver a knee. And he locks him in the octopus hold. And Muldoon nowhere to go as he is all tied up in that octopus. Target is four, roll is a seven. So he's able to escape. But Muldoon gets the pin or the fatigue token here. As Santo is now on the attack. Santo's getting frustrated going to back him out of the ring here. Uh, and no, as they back out of the ring, uh, Muldoon turns it around, Santo falls out of the ring, strikes his head on the floor, and he may be counted out here. Target is seven, roll is a seven, that does it, Santo not able to return to the ring, and William Muldoon wins the match by count out, so not quite the ending that anybody wanted to see, but it is enough for William Muldoon to retain his NBBW World's Junior Heavyweight title. So we're going to record that one. Uh, Muldoon beat El Santo by count out. Uh, so he had... Uh, what would that be... I'm trying to see where Santo added his last pin token. Well, let's see. He's a 4-1. So if he's got 7, he had 6. So that's 7 tokens. Plus Muldoon had 3 tokens. So that's 10. So that's a 5-star match. I'm going to knock a star off for the, uh, for the screwy finish. And uh, so... Santo had seven tokens. Muldoon had three tokens. And that is it. And here we go. So we should see... Yep, there we go. And rankings, I think we have to change this to uh, year one. Otherwise, it's not going to show us our rankings. And there we go. Uh, because it's a new program and I this is the first thing I've recorded, everybody's starting fresh, basically. So I do have the, uh, the title histories in here, but it doesn't have the defenses, unfortunately. I do record them in, in uh, Obsidian anyway, so they're not lost. But it will record your defenses as well. So, uh, But yeah, you can see here Muldoon... He won the title in December of year one. Uh, this was September of year five. So Muldoon approaching his fourth year as champion. Um, just really, really uh, dominant in the junior heavyweight division. Anyway, so that's going to do it for me. Thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I will see you all later.